Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover what function overloading or method overloading is in AutoIt. Most programming languages have a thing called function overloading or method overloading, they're the same thing, which allow you to specify a different number of parameters for your functions, while they still have the same name. So I've gone ahead and created an example of what method overloading looks like. Just bear with me while I explain the concept, because this isn't how it actually looks in AutoIt. So like I said, this is what method overloading is in principle. It's where you create a function that has the same name, you create it multiple times, but you have different number of parameters with each time you declare it. Here I have the uh, method called my funk, which is just some random function. It has no parameters. Here I have the same function with only one parameter. Same function again, but with two. Now in most programming languages, they will treat these three functions as different functions. They call this line here where you're declaring the function or the method, they call it the method signature or the function signature. And basically it includes the name of the function, the parameters, and in some programming languages, the return type as well, which is like if it returns like a string or a number, stuff like that. AutoIt doesn't really have return types by default though, so that's kind of separate. Anyways, that's what method overloading is. You, create, you declare the same method with the same name multiple times, and you give them different parameters or different number of parameters each time you declare it. And then when you call the method or function, um, it will change the code based on the parameters you provided it. So for example, if I call my func and then I do nothing, it's only gonna call the first one because I never provided any uh, parameters, which would call this one. But you know, if I provided say two, let's just do that here, a demonstration. We'll just do test one, test two, so then in this situation, it would only call this one. But yeah, that's method overloading in principle. Unfortunately, AutoIt doesn't have something this awesome. They don't have it as specific as this. Most programming languages do, AutoIt doesn't, but there is a workaround. So we're gonna cover how to do that workaround because it's super useful with your code. All right, so I've deleted those example methods or functions. It's the same word, means the same thing. I've deleted those example functions and I'm gonna create for this, uh, for this video, I'm gonna create a function for doing tooltips easier. So we're gonna do func and I'm gonna just call it TT so I can, you know, call it in my code a lot easier. And I'm gonna give it two parameters. One is gonna be the message and the second is how long I want the program to pause so I can see the tooltip. So I'll just do sleep and then end funk. Well, this video is gonna be on method overloading, like I said. So if we were to just leave it like this, every time we call TT, we have to give it a message and a sleep time as arguments. Instead, what we're gonna do is where we have sleep right here, we're gonna give it a default value of, let's say 1000. Now, every time we call TT, we only need to provide the message and it will use sleep with its default value unless we specify otherwise. This is how you can get away with a kind of method overloading. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and add our tooltip here. And I'm going to say message. And let's also sleep for sleep. Perfect. I'm gonna call it now. So above this or below, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna do TT parentheses and hello world. And let's see what happens. It runs, lasts for a second and then stops. Let me uh, go ahead and duplicate this line. Oops, control D for duplicating. This time I'm gonna do hello world is super, super slow. And now I'm gonna press comma and do 10,000. Actually, I'm gonna do 5,000 because that's just un unreasonable. <laughs> um, so 
We've got that. I'm actually gonna clear the tooltip here. I could use our new method, but you know, just to keep things clean, I'm gonna use a new tooltip and I'm just gonna do that. So what this will do is this is gonna clear the tooltip completely and get rid of our original message. I'm also gonna sleep for like, I don't know, 500 milliseconds. Cause I want you guys to be able to see the difference between what this tooltip looks like and this tooltip. Anyways, we're ready to go. If I press F5 now, it'll show hello world like it did. It'll last a second, or a thousand milliseconds is one second. And then it'll clear the tooltip, wait half a second, and then show this. If it works, it'll show it for five seconds. So let's see what happens. If I press F5 now, hello world, pause. And then hello world is super slow. Nothing's happening. It's still going, and it's still going. So that is an example. The first hello world, it was gone in a second, literally. But the other one lasted for five. So this is how you can get away with method overloading. Here's something cool. AutoWit is a programming language that is dynamically typed. What that means is all of our variables can be any data type. So right now message is being treated as a string and that string is getting output to tooltip. And sleep is being treated as an integer or an int and we're assuming it's an actual number, and we're gonna make our program sleep for this number. Dynamically typed though, when a, so when a language is dynamically typed, it means that while we're using message as a string, it doesn't have to be a string. I can use message as a number if I want to. And similarly, even though we set sleep to be default to a thousand, I can use sleep for our tooltip message. So we can use these variables for different data types. Here's a cool example of how we can use that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna press enter a couple times and then we're gonna do if, and then we're gonna do is number, which is a function in AutoIt. And I'll do a tutorial on this later. If is number, and we're gonna do sleep, oops, then we'll sleep. We want to do this for two reasons. If I turn this sleep variable into like a true or false statement or a string, and I try to sleep for that time, it's going to crash our program. So we have to check first to see if it's a number or not. If it is a number, we're going to assume as the developers that we want to sleep for that much time. So we'll keep it that way. But if it's not a number, what we're going to do is we're going to assume, actually, I'm going to put an else here. And then let's sleep for a thousand as a default time. And then we're gonna output sleep like that. Well, actually like this. So what we're doing here is we're saying if sleep is a number, we're gonna actually sleep for that much time. But if it's not a number, we're gonna just put a tooltip up and then we're just gonna pause the program for a second so we can see the tooltip. Now let's see what this looks like. So I'm gonna scroll up, I'm gonna duplicate this, just like before, I am going to clear the tooltip. And instead of our second uh, value here, instead of doing 5,000, let's do, holy crap, it worked! Awesome! So let's see what happens. I press F5, and I forgot the then keyword. I That always gets me. There we go. So now, We'll try this once more. Press F5, we got hello world. Super slow hello world. And then, holy crap, it worked. Awesome. So to summarize what we just did, because AutoIt is a dynamically typed programming language, these variables that we give default values to, we can change to be totally different data types. So we can make our methods even more dynamic or have more overloads, so to speak. You can add as many of these as you'd like to. It's good practice not to get too crazy. If your methods start getting so uh, expanded and diverse that you might have to change the name or you think you could change the name, you need to break it apart into smaller functions. Method overloading should only be used for when it makes sense. Or if you want to give yourself a little more versatility with your code. Like in this example, we can use sleep as a timer or as another message box. Or sorry, tooltip. And I may or may not have said this earlier in the video. 
but any variables that you have in your functions that aren't declared to something as a default, like this is. If it doesn't have a default, you have to use this one every time. You can never skip message in this example. You must always put message in your methods. So if I tried to do this, oops, if I tried to just do TT like that, it would crash because it's expecting message. If we wanted to, we could easily fix that. We just go like this and we're done. Um, and then it should work. Let's see here. Yep, work no problem. But yeah, that's pretty much that. We're getting away with method overloading by adding extra variables to our functions or our methods. And we're just giving those variables default values so we don't have to use them all the time. And if you wanted to, you could add more code in here so it, your methods do different things if the variables are numbers or strings or true or false or you get the idea. Anyways, that's the video. I hope I didn't complicate this too much. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Or you can join the Discord server and just ping me for help and I'll get to you as soon as possible. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching.